We're at Gamescom 2016, catching up on Gigantic. Uh, it's a game I've been following for a couple of years now, uh, or a year and a half maybe, from GDC 2015, I think, was the first time I really, really saw it. Yeah, uh, and and it's been an it's been an adventurous 18 months for you guys. How would you sort of, in your own words, put put that time period? Uh, uh, yeah, so what you're alluding to is we actually had an issue with funding and needed to uh, figure out how we were proceeding. And, uh, you know, we'd been working under a particular deal and uh, got a new deal with uh, another partner. And so um, it's actually, you know, obviously it's challenging anytime you're in that situation. But uh, it's been really good in terms of the overall outcome because what happened is now we've got the game coming out on more platforms. And, you know, anytime you're working on a game, the, the more people who can play it, play it. So before it was Xbox One and uh, Windows 10 Store sort of exclusive. Now it's still those things, you know, we're still developing it for those. But uh, also anybody on any Windows system, uh, uh, we're partnered with Perfect World. Uh, with an ARC account, you get it, it's going to be free to play. So uh, anything where more people can play it, the better. So, uh, you know, situations like that, always challenging, definitely a lot of things to, to work through, but then, uh, if you navigate well, you can come out stronger. It is interesting, but we should sort of underline also that the game itself is the same game that, that was communicated from the start. This hasn't really impacted what the game is. Yeah, you know, we, we had a strong vision of what we wanted to do with Gigantic. It's, you know, five on five online competitive game. And there were a lot of things that we wanted to do that we thought would be exciting for people. and. Uh, the, the vision for what the game is hasn't changed the, the things that we're doing. You know, it's a, since last Gamescom, it's a year better in terms of play balance, in terms of a lot of the mechanic design, a lot of the pacing of the game, the uh, kind of strategic motivations, the subtleties that you need to really uh, sort out in a competitive game are much better than, they, than they've ever been. But the basics of what we're trying to do, your five heroes, getting to customize them with upgrades during the course of the match, and working together as a team to take down giant enemy uh, guardian, all that's still the, the same. I think it's interesting because you talked a lot about sort of your vision for competitive gaming and it seems like pretty much every design choice in there sort of comes from that sort of that core vision. If you'd like to sort of detail that out. Oh, and, sure. and Yeah, uh, you know, I've been working on competitive games for a while and, and other stuff. I've actually taken a break from that uh, recently. But uh, there were a lot of things that I thought that we could do uh, that would work well with Gigantic. You know, one of them is just philosophy for me of trying to give players as many strategic options as possible. We want to think of the game as providing a, a toolkit, not dictating to them you have to play this way or you have to play that way, but trying to make sure that there are actually a lot of potential right strategic choices in a given situation and that the, uh, the circumstances, the, all, the, all the factors you evaluate of like, is this how we should play it or is that how we should play it? Are, are very diverse, and so that there's a lot of depth to the game, people have a chance to think about stuff. Balance is obviously uh, really important, and then, uh, you know, I'd just been talking for a while about, one of the big uh, problems that I thought we could make an advancement in competitive games was to make sure that the sort of point of decision, the, the, the moment when it's clear who won the game, is actually the end of the game, and not that that happens early in the game and then they're just kind of playing it out. And so there are a lot of quirks that we had sort of theories about you know, three, three years ago when we started planning out the project, uh, that uh, with a lot of work, you know, missteps along the way, adjustments here and there, we're really seeing in the game now in terms of trying to make sure that it's possible to earn a comeback. The game doesn't cheat for you or... There's no rubber band or anything. Yeah, yeah. But the opportunities are there. And there's a lot of very uh, careful, specific design decisions to try to create small windows of opportunity for you to dramatically reverse your fortune in a game. I think that's interesting because I was thinking of a tennis match where like it's never over until the match ball is in there because right. you always have a chance for a combat. Of course, if you're down, it's, it may be more difficult, yes. but specifically. No, I, I think that's a, a great analogy, right? And it doesn't matter if I lost three games 40 love, or not, not 40 love, but, but love, right? Uh, if, uh, and, and everyone that I'm winning is close. It's still how many games did you win? And then the thing with Gigantic, with the, with the Guardians, they've got three wounds. So you're never down, you know, <laughs> an insurmountable amount. And, and you have an advantage when you're serving yourself. But then again, it can be difficult if your serves off or something <laughs> like that. You know? Yeah, uh, we're getting too lost in, in the metaphor. You know, we, 
I do think sometimes in terms of, of different sports things, and you know, there's a there's a lot to be learned from games of all kinds. When you look at like, well, why does this work? Why there's hundreds and hundreds of years of design yeah, yeah, that went exactly. into it. Exactly, like those things have evolved that way for for a reason. Players are. Um, uh, have, have taken time to refine rules of these sports and figure out what works and what doesn't work. And we've even seen, uh, you know, I'm, the states are really like uh, basketball, NBA basketball, and you see the way they've adjusted rules over the last uh, decade and a half, they've really made some very specific choices to push the game in, in ways that open up more options for teams. Um, probably just made a bunch of fans of old school basketball angry at me. but. Uh, in, in that same way, we can look at, you know, when you're designing a game, a lot of times the direct choice of like, oh, well, we'll make a rule that does this to force that doesn't have the consequence you want. You really need to see what are the second and third order impacts of your choices. And so uh, that's been the, the great thing about having a clear idea of what we want in, in Gigantic, having some idea of how maybe we could do it, and then having these years to keep working on it and try to get it to a state where, okay, well, that that finally, that actually does work. This other thing we tried didn't. And so, uh, you know, we've got it at Gamescom on the, the show floor now, and I hope that we're, we're seeing from players that the changes we've made in the, in the last year really have, have improved the game and gotten it that much closer to where it's ready to come out. It is interesting because you're talking about sort of predicting player behavior in a way, and your, your design vision is sort of making it so that players have a lot of different choices, and <clears throat> that makes it hard to predict. So. It's kind of this, this beast that you have to yeah. see what goes on there to sort of adapt yeah. to it. And well, so there's actually a really simple trick to that. Uh, you can't trust yourself as a designer or trust your, your team to know everything. And so we made a commitment really early in the project to try to bring on board uh, players, we call it the sort of core program, players who are better than the vast majority of us at the office who are you know, skilled competitive players in, in other games and uh, or preferably even like teams of them. And we play the game every week with them. We let them complain at us about design every week. Uh, once a month I do like a bigger sort of summit conversation with them. We have forums that are specifically with them and they're constantly testing and probing, telling us why the ideas we have aren't gonna work the way we want them to work. And that's invaluable. Like if you're gonna be serious about making a competitive game or making a game that's balanced, you have to kind of put your ego aside and say, okay, let me let me listen to the players and and learn what they're trying to teach me. That's interesting. What? How do you see sort of the roadmap ahead for Gigantic now? You got the partnership in place. Everything is is proceeding. Yeah. Where are you at, and, and yeah. where are we going? Yeah. So we're we're really close. You know, with with a uh, new server infrastructure and a lot of the other uh, sort of behind the scenes changes we're making. We're actually just working on technical stuff right now to be ready to to relaunch. What'll first be probably just stress test, make sure servers are okay, and then we'll we'll see where we where we go from there. We hope to launch relatively soon, uh, but uh, you know, and so we've got parts of the team that are just working on new content, refining balance, getting things ready for the future, uh, and then a lot of it's just fixing problems. You know, our sort of backlog of bugs and polish issues, making sure, you know this kind of thing feels good. A lot of the, because it's a very fast paced game, a lot of the challenges of making sure things feel smooth over the network and feel responsive uh, are there. And we've been systematically over the last six months hitting a lot of that, but we still have a, a list of things we need to tackle there. So really it's, right now it's uh, a quality pass on things and a stability pass on things as much as, as we can, in addition to getting more stuff ready. Because you know once a free to play game is out there, you need to keep giving people new things got to get that pipeline ready. Yeah, exactly. And so, yeah, that's what we've been focused on this whole time, making sure that the way we're building the game is the way we'll keep building it in the future. And that's both from a content standpoint and then even, as I was talking about before, balance. Making sure we're used to hearing from the community. And right now, it's the small core group. Mm. Eventually, hopefully, it'll be a lot more people. All right. Thank you so much for your time. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.